So welcome to this uh, video. Uh, we're continuing the series of um, training videos based on a workshop in Grenoble. This video is about segmentation wizard. So I'm going to get screen sharing and um, what I've got loaded up here is a Lego man, which you might remember from one of the first videos in the series. It's a uh, scan of a, a Lego figurine. Um, it's uh, what I want to demonstrate here is using the segmentation wizard for um, sparse training with sparse training data just to get a quick segmentation using um, not deep learning but um, machine learning algorithms so like random forest. So under artificial intelligence, we go to segmentation wizard. Um, we're going to use this data called the regional and how it works is in uh, a new window comes up, a new context. So if you look here, you now have two dragonfly windows really. So um, this, the whole idea of the segmentation wizard is to make the training of, of models simple, simple and um, easier for you to add and uh, compare different models and to um, add data as you go along. So I'm starting off with a sparse data, a simple example here on a Lego man. And then the next video will be on a more typical uh, case with more classes. Here we have, um, we need to add a frame. So let's select this as a frame for training. Um, so we, I click the little plus button here to add a new frame. And in each frame, we need to give it classes. We're going to have two classes. We can rename it. This is called, this we can call background and this we can call plastic. So now what we're going to do here, um, we've got these painting tools as, um, as usual for segmentation. So all the segmentation tools for 2D are available here because you need to paint the slice somehow. What we're going to do is we're going to do a full um, paintbrush in 2D and we're just going to paint some background pixels like that for the background and for the plastic similar thing. We're going to do that and do that and do that. That should be enough. So um, now what we're going to do is we can um, have a look. We can just simply go to, we've already painted some pixels. Now, this is what I refer to as sparse data. So not all pixels are marked, which means unit and neural networks cannot be trained on this, but the traditional ones can. So when we click on train, there's a strategy selection that can be done here. <clears throat> the quick start does three, trains three models, two random forest models and one unit model, which is a shallow, uh, easy, simple version with only three depth, depth of three. So actually the unit won't be able to be trained, but it's, if we just continue on the quick start, it's going to tell us that it's having, it's not going to have trouble training that one. <clears throat> so it says it cannot provide, uh, it cannot train on the unit, but it trains on the two other options, the two random forest models. So, and the idea here is that you get a initial um, uh, segmentation, which you can then apply to a next frame to improve and iteratively improve your model until it, it's really a strong model. So you might need to fix up the, um, the segmentation slightly after the first round. So the idea of these videos are to show you how to use these tools and to show you where to where the buttons are and what the functions are. And I hope this is useful um, for um, following and reproducing this on your own data. Um, this is, I think the only video, these are the only videos available on the current version of the software. Um, but as I've said before, if you send us your data, we're happy to continue making videos for others, for yourself and for others to learn in this way. So what you see now on the bottom left and right are two different predictions from random forest models, which are both pretty good. And the idea is that you choose one which is better, like um, you need to, you need to um, basically click on this little button, which then tells you, which then promotes this segmentation into the frame, which 
the idea is that you can maybe zoom in and slightly fix up some of this. It's not a, it's actually a very simple example. So there's nothing <laughs> much wrong here. What I would fix is maybe a bit of artifact there. So I would, um, by the way, I can at this point show you if you highlight both of these classes and you use the paintbrush tool using control adds material and um, shift removes material, but um, with a by it, it's a select, um, it's a, it adds one and removes the other at the same time. So there's no unmarked pixels and it's a way, it's an easy way of painting. Maybe I'll demonstrate on some other data later. It's an easy way of painting um, between uh, to without making mistakes between things. It's maybe more easier to explain on a three class data. But the point is, okay, so now we've got this, how it works, how the logic of this method works is we've now got a frame, which is now fully all pixels are painted. This will now be used for training in the next round. Now we select another slice. So we scroll down to somewhere like this and we can zoom in a bit and we can add this one. And it's actually applying those two models to this new frame that's that I'm selecting. So I've added a new frame and it's made two predictions here. Let's take again this one. I, I think that's pretty good. Um, if we want to improve it slightly, we can now again do this uh, paintbrush tool. We can select based on the, we can actually do a, a local Otsu, which means it's going to improve the, the threshold between the two using the, the Otsu threshold within the radius of the circle. So it takes the, the Otsu threshold between and that's not that's not correct, of course. So let's fix that up. Let's um, just make a local Otsu upper at this point. There we go. So you can um, fix your model. That's the idea. We can use this also for training. So now we have two training frames, and then we can. Uh, what we can do is we can then add a third frame. Oh, I've added the same frame. That's a mistake. So cancel that. It's not helpful. Uh, well, how do I delete this frame? Let's see. This one. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now let's go to another frame. So let's take the head as a monitoring frame. So it's actually making predictions on this also. But I don't actually want to use that prediction now. What I, what I want to do is I want to demonstrate if I use this as a monitoring frame and I now go to these models, I put, oh, I put off the random forest models and I act, uh, make the UNET model, it is active, so it's going to be trained. If I train now, it's now going to train using that data, it's going to train a, a UNET model. So using the two um, fully segmented frames, it's going to train a neural network model, which is usually um, more accurate than random forest models. This is a very simple example just for demo. So. Um, more, it's going to be pretty good result, but similar than the random forest model. But I wanted to use a simple example here. In the next example, I will, um, I think I'll make it another example as well, which is a um, slightly more complicated one. Let's, let's call this the, the simpler version. I think the idea here is more to explain how to promote from sparse data to full fully dense, uh, dense data, and then to promote that to a unit model, um, the process of doing that. So that is a, a typical workflow, one typical workflow in segmentation wizard. So there you can see a preview frame, a monitoring frame, and you will see the segmentation as, 
as the um, training continues, typically you need to wait at least 10, 10 epochs. Um, so it's typically when you start training, time to take a break and do something else. Um, I'm not going to wait that long here because I've or it's quite clear the segmentation is okay. It might still improve slightly. Let's have a look. The loss values did the the loss value did decrease. So these values should decrease and reach closer and closer to zero. Um, sometimes they jump a little bit up, and then you should just leave it because eventually it will re reduce again. And in reducing means improving. All right, so I think that's that's all I want to demonstrate here. And let's keep these videos short. I will um, do the next video also with Segmentation Wizard, but then directly um, painting frames for a neural network um, starting from scratch, not starting not from sparse data as I did in this video. And I will use slightly more complex data in that case. Let's just like look at what this, how this looks on the third epoch. It's not really improving, but um, it's, if we stop it, that's, um, that's uh, probably a good model. And the way to export it is when, when you exit, it's going to ask you, what do you want to save? We want to save this guy. So publish selected models. Yes. Um, it's now called, it's given, I gave it a strange name here. The name is Segwiz unit uh, with that, that default name. I should have given it a different name. But the idea is if you want to apply it now to this data, what you can do is you can go to the segmentation tab and segment with AI, and you can use the model. It's a unit. Let's have a look, what did we call it? I think it's this guy. I'm not sure, but then the idea is you click on segment all slices, or you can click on a preview, which just gives you the, the slice here, which is what I'm going to do now. And that's, that is the model that we had. And the idea is if you've got a preview, it's actually the same as when you have a fully segmented um, data set on the whole volume, you've got a background class and a plastic class. In this case, we would take the plastic class extract that as an ROI and from that region of interest, you can then make a mesh or visualize it in 3D or do whatever you want to do with it further. All right, that's all for this video. Um, let me stop sharing and stop the video.